Amen. Praise the Lord. Father, we thank you for the Bible study tonight. Thank you for your goodness, for your mercy, for your compassion. And thank you, Lord, because you are preparing a place for everyone in heaven. And you are preparing us for that place too. We pray, Lord, your own preparation, our own preparation will match your preparation in Jesus' name. Help us to be serious-minded. Help us, Lord, to be focused. Help us to take in your word as you are giving us your word in Jesus' name. Help us not to be careless with our soul, gamble with our soul, or gamble with our eternity in Jesus' name. Once again, open the scriptures to every heart. And I pray, Lord, the desire, the passion, the zeal to follow after you and pursue the way of righteousness from the depth of our heart. You're grant to everyone in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord, because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. I welcome everyone once again to our Bible study tonight. Tonight, we are in Galatians chapter 6, reading from verse 7 to verse 10. Galatians chapter 6, reading from verse 7. It says, Be not deceived, God is not mocked. For whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. And then in verse 8, it says, For he that soweth to his flesh, shall of the flesh reap corruption but he that soweth to the spirit shall of the spirit reap life everlasting in verse 9 it says let us not be weary in well doing for in due season we shall reap if we faint not then in verse 10 it concludes by saying as we have therefore opportunity, let us do good to all men, especially unto them who are the household of faith. Tonight, the Lord is talking to us about what we should be familiar with in the natural sowing and reaping. In the farming um, endeavor, sowing and reaping. And in every area of our lives, it is what we sow that we reap. Think about it morally, sowing and reaping. Think about it spiritually, sowing and reaping. Think about it in our families, sowing and reaping. And think about it in every community, in your work, in your service. It is what you sow that you will reap. It is what you put in that you will that you will harvest you put in something good that's what you will harvest you put in something not so good that's what you harvest that's what the lord is saying is telling us tonight that whatsoever a man soweth whatsoever a woman soweth whatever even a child a teenager a youth whatsoever anyone sows that is what he will reap and the lord wants us to understand that principle and that universal law that works everywhere every time from the beginning of days until this time until the end of time it is what we sow that we reap we're looking at second timothy chapter 2 reading from verse 7 in second timothy chapter 2 verse 7 consider what i say that's what the Lord is saying. We need to consider what is being said. From the time of Adam, Adam should have considered and Eve should have considered. Consider what I say. If in any, every occasion, in every temptation, in every endeavor, anything we're doing, if we had considered what he has said, we'll not get into trouble. Consider what I say. If Moses had considered what God said, speak to the rock. He wouldn't have stricken the rock and then got into 
the problem he got into if the people of the world and people in the church had considered and you consider each every moment you want to do something consider what he has said you want to act in any way consider what he has said you want to sow any seed consider what he has said you want to behave or act in any way consider what he has said consider what i say and the lord give thee understanding in all things can i have a good amen there you know, sometimes we don't have understanding from the Lord in everything we do, and we just rush ahead and get that thing done. And the prayer we need to pray is the prayer the apostle is praying for us that the Lord will give you understanding understanding of the scriptures, understanding of your way of life, understanding of the consequences of your action, understanding of everything you do, anywhere you go, understand. The Lord give you understanding How you ought to live How you ought to sow And what you are going to reap The Lord give you understanding In all things When that prayer is answered Will not be falling and rising When that prayer is answered Will not be acting like the old habit Old lifestyle That gets us into the judgment of God When that prayer is answered We'll be able to sow what is right What is proper And what is commanded by God And then We will have the result And the reward And the reaping That we're, ex that we're expecting Consider what I say When we come to the Bible study And when we listen to the word of God We should match all that we're hearing with our lives and consider that how do I do in that area how have I done in that area all the things I do am I considering what he has said and then as the Lord giving me understanding in all things in little things in big things in the things I saw in the things I do in the things I expect consider what I say and the Lord give the understanding in all things today we're looking at understanding the universal law of sowing and reaping understanding and thinking about it and putting it in and making it to help our lives and transform our lives understanding the universal law of sowing and reaping there are three things we're looking at number one the endless reaping after sowing to the flesh the endless reaping after sowing to the flesh number two the eternal reward of sowing to the spirit number three the effectual response of saying sowing in due season let's look at number one number one the endless reaping after sowing to the flesh we're looking at that again in galatians chapter 6 verse 7 and 8 be not deceived god is not mocked for whatsoever a man soweth that shall he also reap and then in verse 8 it says in verse 8 for he that soweth to his flesh to his flesh to his flesh it doesn't just say to the flesh but he that sows to his flesh or he that sows to her flesh whatever we do of the works of the flesh the reason we do it is because we want to derive something from that you are sowing in not to another person's flesh not to another man's flesh not to another woman's flesh you are actually sowing to your own flesh and it says he that is a man or she that is a woman anyone whether in or out anyone the thoughtless one the careless one and the sinful one and the one that doesn't have is not thinking about the consequences of what he's doing he or she that swears to his or her flesh shall of the flesh reap corruption and reap condemnation and reap the things that are contrary to blessing in his life but 
he that soweth to the spirit is not sowing to his spirit is sowing to the spirit that he is to the holy ghost shall of the spirit reply everlasting the endless everlasting there is the thing that brings out the word endless the endless reaping after sowing to the flesh we're looking at three things here number one number one is the consequence of sowing defilement to the flesh the consequence the result the outcome the recompense and the thing that will follow endlessly the consequence of sowing defilement to the flesh number two the cost of sowing discord in the fellowship number three the condemnation for seared sores destined to fury fury forever look at number one number one is the consequence of sowing defilement to the flesh that's what it says in galatians chapter 6 verse 7 be not deceived don't say it will never happen to me i will get to heaven no matter what i do no matter what i touch no matter what i taste no matter what i drink no matter what i sow to the flesh i know i'm a child for heaven do not deceive yourself there is the universal law of the almighty god that whosoever sows to the flesh will reap corruption god is not mocked you cannot treat the law of god anyhow the principle of god anyhow the revelation of god anyhow and say i'm still saved i'm a child of god it says do not deceive yourself god is not mocked for what whatsoever a man soweth whatsoever a woman soweth whatsoever a child soweth whatsoever the youth the boy or the girl soweth that shall he also reap and then the first part of verse 8 it says for he she that soweth to his flesh shall of the flesh reap corruption he or she that soweth to her flesh is flesh shall reap corruption we're looking at first corinthians chapter 15 verse 33 in first corinthians chapter 15 verse 33 be not deceived evil communications corrupt good manners it says don't deceive yourself i can move in the gang and they will not affect me i can move with those who steal and those who commit immorality i can browse that thing i can get into the pornography i know myself you have deceived yourself be not deceived evil communications corrupt good manners and in proverbs chapter 22 verse 8 it tells us there he that soweth iniquity shall reap vanity don't deceive yourself don't say my my salvation is intact my righteousness is intact my redemption is intact even though i sow iniquity even though i talk iniquity even though i drink iniquity even though i eat iniquity even though i wear iniquity like a garment whatever you sow that's what you will reap he that soweth iniquity shall reap vanity and the rod of his anger shall fail that he is the people who hold the rod and they want to smite and they want to a kind of weep the people that are telling them don't sow iniquity don't sow evil do not sow transgression and they have a rod in their hand and they say if you say that again i will, I will apply this on you the rod of their anger will fail we're looking at second peter chapter 2 reading from verse 12 it says but these as natural brute beasts made to be taken and destroyed they speak evil of the things that 
they understand not instead of repenting instead of turning around instead of having transformation and total freedom and change in their lives they rather speak evil of the things they understand not and they shall utterly perish in their own corruption that is what they sow that is what, how they live and because of that they shall utterly completely assuredly perish in their corruption in verse 19 it tells us in verse 19 while they promise them liberty the cheese they are promising the people they want to sow corruption into the other people's lives they want to sow defilement into other people's lives and they are promising them uh, no bad thing will happen you know i'm the one doing it i'm in authority and because i'm in authority don't you know my position let's do it nothing bad will happen they promise other people liberty they themselves are the servants of corruption for of whom a man is overcome of the same is he brought into bondage they come into bondage under the flesh under bad evil character let's look at number two now number two the cost of sowing discord in the fellowship sowing discord in the fellowship we're talking now of the family of god we're talking now of the people of god and there are people they sow discord now if you sow discord in the family of god remember that whatsoever a man sows, that shall he also reap somebody will sow discord into your own family you sow and then you reap if you knock heads together in the family of god then in your own family because that's what you are sowing that's what you are going to reap they'll be knocking your heads together in your family if you scatter the family of god and the fellowship of the believers by sowing discord into the family into the fellowship into the assembly of the children of god be careful be careful whatsoever a man sows that shall he also reap scatter the family of god and your family too will be scattered because it's a universal principle it is what god does it is what god has put in place like a law and that law cannot be contradicted with impunity we're looking at proverbs chapter 6 and i'm reading from verse 14 forwardness is in the heart of is in the heart he deviseth mischief continually he soweth discord he the one whose heart has not been changed he likes strife he likes evil he likes discord he likes scattering he likes knock, knocking heads together he deviseth mischief continually he soweth discord look at verse 16 in verse 16 these six doth the lord hate ye seven an abomination unto him what are the things god hates the things that are abomination unto him look at verse 17 a proud look nobody can talk to him a proud look nobody can preach to her a proud look he, he looks at everybody and then he belittles everybody don't tell me that i've been born again long ago don't tell me that i've been reading the bible long ago don't tell me that i was a christian before you became a christian a proud look a lying tongue hands that shed innocent blood hands that shed innocent blood Lord, if anyone is innocent at all the baby inside is innocent we're not expecting a baby now uh-huh so what do you do they go to shed innocent blood that's against the will of god or maybe there is a mistake i didn't mean uh, to uh, be pregnant at this time and the world must not know and people must not know because of that they go to whoever wants to and um, be an accomplice in that evil of them hands that shed innocent blood in verse 18 verse 18 says and heart 
the, the, the device says wicked imagination. They are daydreaming, they are imagining evil things, and the device, wicked imagination, speech that be sweet and running to mischief. Anywhere there's mischief, they run there. Anywhere there is fighting or strife, they run there. They're not peacemakers. They want to put some fire, some foil into uh, what is burning already. All these are abominations to the Lord. And then in verse 19, look at this. A false witness that speaketh lies, and he that soweth, she that soweth, the man the woman, people respect him, people respect her. And you think because of the respect we have for him, for her, she will talk to unite people and to make uh, those who have uh, turned uh, their backs to each other, he'll turn them around and reconcile them. But no, he uses his position, he uses his ability, he uses his privilege to cause discord, disagreement among the brethren and God hates that it says he that soweth discord among the brethren the gossips, that's what they do the tail bearers that's what they do the backsliders, that's what they do and the backbiters, that's what they do and the people that carry stories, have you heard? the people that tell untrue stories, have you heard? and they want to separate friends and they want to scatter families it says what they sow is discord the people that sow discord among the brethren and God is against them and God hates that and God is going to bring judgment on that because these are the things that God hates he that soweth she that soweth a man a woman a youth a child a teenager anyone he that soweth discord among the brethren and what you sow is what you are going to reap we're looking at proverbs chapter 16 reading from verse 28 chapter 16 verse 28 a forward man undependable man a man that she's not steady a man you cannot trust if he tells you anything you have to go and check off from another person because you can never tell the truthfulness of what he's saying and that forward man unconverted not born again a forward man a forward woman soweth strive and a whisperer separated chief friends the Lord hates all this and he has established a law that whatsoever you sow that is what you will reap. We're looking at uh, James chapter 3 and I'm reading from verse 14 James chapter 3 verse 14 but she have bitter envy and strife in your heart glory not and lie not against the truth do you have bitter envy in your heart what others have their property their family their husband their wife their children their position do you envy them and because of that envy you have bitter envy and strive and uh, you are so touchy if he wants to talk to you if she wants to talk to you it's like you've been fighting and the brother is asking what the matter is because of the bitter envy in her and the bitter strife in your heart it says glory not and lie not against the truth in verse 15 verse 15 tells us this wisdom descended not from above but is earthly and sensual and devilish verse 16 then tells of where envy and strife is there is confusion and every evil work uh, look at an example in second samuel chapter 16 verse 23 and the counsel of ahithophel which he counseled in those days was as if a man had inquired at the oracle of god so was all the counsel of Ahithophel, both with David and with Absalom. 
the, the, you know the story perhaps uh, Ahithophel had been a counselor a guide for David and whatever he counseled it was right on the point and if he told David don't go that way David would realize that's good counsel but eventually something happened that Ahithophel who had been a guide a counselor a friend a supporter and somebody who will help David to achieve what God wanted him to achieve something happened that made Ahithophel hate David now. And so when Absalom came up as a rival, when Absalom came up and wanted to, to steal the crown from David, Ahithophel shifted and went to Absalom. And he was now the one counseling Absalom how to defile the women attached to David and he was the one now counseling uh, uh, this Absalom how to get together give me chance and I'll get uh, Israelites and he mentioned the number and I will strike I will strike your father David alone can you imagine what the man was doing? A person that was a guide, a counselor, a friend to the father before. Now shifted to Absalom who wanted to steal the throne and steal the crown. And eventually in the following chapter, he gave the advice. And another person said, no, that's not right at this time. And when he saw that his counseling was not accepted, he went and hanged himself committed suicide and went to hell forever and ever because whatsoever a man soweth that shall he also reap we're looking at number three here we're looking at the condemnation for search source destined for fury forever job chapter four we're looking at verse 8 in Job chapter 4 verse 8 even as I have seen they that plow iniquity no matter in what generation they that plow iniquity no matter on the cover you know they have the cover of you know everybody trusting them they will not do evil and yet on the cover they do evil they speak evil they plan evil the plot evil and it says even as I have seen they that plow iniquity and sow wickedness reap the same have you noticed that when we sow we don't only reap what we sow we reap beyond what we sow higher greater of the same type of the same nature of the same seed as we have sown but greater in number when you sow evil the same kind of evil you will reap but it will be greater deeper higher and then it will be sustained longer look at verse 9 in verse 9 by the blast of God they perish those who sow iniquity those who sow transgression those who sow evil those who sow discord by the blast of God they perish by the breath of his nostrils are they consumed consumed but we're talking about those who are even seared in their conscience their consciences are hardened and therefore even if they are hearing the word of God even if they know that this is a universal principle and this happens everywhere no matter what country you are and no matter what nation you live in no matter whatever generation you are the unchanging universal principle of the Lord and the law of God is that whatsoever anyone sows that it shall reap even then their conscience is seared they are sold to the flesh they are sold to transgression they are sold to evil and they are being sold to evil blindfolds them hardens them that they cannot turn around it tells us in first 
First Timothy chapter 4, reading from verse 1. First Timothy chapter 4, verse 1. Now, the Spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter times, that's the time we're living, in the latter times, some shall depart from the faith. They were in the faith before. You remember when they were converted? You remember the joy of salvation? You remember the excitement they had? And they said, I'm going to follow this way until the end of my life. You remember their testimonies when they testified, I'm born again. I've never had any experience like this before. You remember at that time, anything they did, they did with total devotion unto the Lord. They were in the faith, but now the Spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter times some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. How is that? And what's the effect upon them? Look at verse 2. In verse 2, speaking lies in hypocrisy. Those who were in the faith before they were honest, they were humble, and they were holy. But now, after backsliding, and then they're deep in that backsliding, it says now they speak lies in hypocrisy, having their conscience seared with a hot iron. Having their conscience seared with a hot iron. Those people now will so evil and the evil they sow will affect the kingdom of God, affect the church of God negatively but they have made up their minds they are going to remain enemies of the kingdom enemies of the fellowship enemies of the people of God and the growth of the kingdom and therefore they are going to keep on planting and sowing that which is evil in Matthew chapter 13 reading from verse 24 Matthew 13 verse 24 another parable put he forth as Christ unto them saying the kingdom of heaven is likened unto a man which sowed good seed good word good doctrine good message, good salvation message, good sanctification message, and good powerful mighty message in his field. And then verse 25, verse 25 says, but while men slept, his enemy came and so tears among the wheat and went his way. While men slept, while the leader sleep. While well, the ministers sleep, what well, the ministers say, I've been talking too much, I've been preaching too much, I've been correcting too much, no more. I want to have peace of mind. Let everyone do what they want to do. At that time when the enemy saw, they were now relaxed. No rebuke for any sin, no correction for any misdeed. When, they, when the ministers left, when ministers sleep and they say, well, they know the truth. It's now in their hand. Whatever they do, that's all right. They hinder the progress of the gospel. They're sleeping. They hinder the prayer in the ministry. They're sleeping. The people who should correct, who should tell them, everybody wake up. We need to keep on vigilant and what we need to keep on watching over what the Lord has given us when men slept. His enemy came and so tears among the wheat and went its way. And then in verse 26, it tells us, But when the blade was sprung up and brought forth fruit, then appeared the tears also. In verse 27, So the servants of the householder came and said unto him, Sir, didst not thou sow good seed in, the, in thy field? From whence then a seed tears? And then in verse 28, he said, And he said unto them, An enemy has done this. When you sow good seed, and somebody comes to sow tears, is proving is an enemy 
to the kingdom of God. An enemy has done this. When you sow holiness in the fellowship, the good seed of the world that will prepare people for heaven. And somebody comes to sow hypocrisy. And that hypocrisy is spreading everywhere. That person coming to sow hypocrisy in the midst of the people you have sowed, the word and the seed of holiness, that sower of hypocrisy is an enemy, an enemy of Christ, an enemy of the church, of the living God, an enemy of the people wanting to get to heaven when you have sown purity of heart, purity of life, and purity of association and interaction in the fellowship, in the church of the living God. Another person comes to sow pride that nobody is going to listen to any pastor, no pastor, no member. We're all the same and nobody has any authority to come and tell us do this or don't do that. You sow purity, another person comes to sow uh, all this impurity and pride in the fellowship that is an enemy. He says unto them, an enemy has done this. The point is, those people who are seared, those people who are hardened, and they sow evil in the fellowship of the people of God. Remember, God is not mocked whatsoever. A man, a woman, whatsoever. A boy, a girl, whatsoever. A young person, a youth or young adult sows that shall he also reap. Jude chapter 1, we're looking at verse 4. In Jude chapter 1, verse 4, for there are certain men crept in unawares who are before of old pre-reaching ordained to this condemnation on godly men. Godly people will sow godly seed. Righteous people will sow righteous seed, but it's the ungodly men, ungodly people, ungodly women, ungodly youths that will sow deliberately ungodliness in the midst of the people of God. It says they were ordained, they were pre-reaching, they were foreknown to this condemnation ungodly men turning the grace of our God into lasciviousness and denying the only Lord God our Lord and Jesus Christ. It says in verse 12, in verse 12 it says these are sports in your feasts of charity. When the feast which you feeding themselves without fear, clouds they are without water, carried about of winds and trees whose fruit withereth without fruit twice dead these are backsliders but their hearts are seared their hearts are hardened and the word of God and the fire of the spirit does not burn hot enough to wake them up and to make them repent and return because they are seared in their heart and it says they are plucked up by the roots in verse 13 verse 13 says raging waves of the sea foaming out their own shame wandering stars to whom is reserved the blackness of darkness forever we're coming to point number two now point number two the eternal reward of sowing to the spirit there are other kinds of sowers they are born again and they're still born again they are sanctified and remain sanctified they're good natured and they remain in their good nature they have the nature of christ and they're working together with christ they're in agreement with christ in everything in salvation agreement with christ in righteousness agreement with christ in holiness of heart and holiness of life holy in every scene and every place, they're in agreement with God, and all the time they watch what they sow because they know whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. They're sowing the good word and they're sowing to the spirit, they're sowing for the benefits of the real 
little children of God and everything they sow will move us forward, will move you forward, will move me forward in the path of righteousness and they do the work of the Lord in all sincerity. These are the people that will have eternal rewards because they sow to the Spirit. Let's come back to Galatians chapter 6 and I'm reading from verse 7. Galatians chapter 6 we're looking at verse 7 it says be not deceived God is not mocked for whatsoever a man a woman, a boy, a girl young or whatsoever a person soweth that shall he also reap and then in verse 8 it says for he that soweth to his flesh shall of the flesh reap corruption but he that soweth to the spirit shall of the spirit reap life everlasting three things we're looking at here number one is the conversion of fleshly sinners by the spirit number two the cultivation and faithful sowing by the sage number three is the commendation of fruitful sowers to the spirit look at number one the way we begin if when we're born we're born he that's of the flesh is flesh we're born of the flesh we were flesh and the works of the flesh we were doing from our birth from our natural birth then we heard the gospel the good news the glad tidings then we heard the word of salvation we paid attention we were convicted of our sins we went on our knees we repented and we turned and we said Lord I'm sorry for the past I want a change of life we came into Christ converted and if any man be in Christ is a new creature old things are now passed away and behold all things have become new the conversion of fleshless sinners by the Spirit of God. In Jeremiah chapter 4, reading from verse 3. Jeremiah chapter 4 verse 3. For thus says the Lord to the men of Judah and Jerusalem, break up your fallow ground and sow not among thorns. Break up your fallow ground. The ground that have been hardened because many people have been walking on that ground. Many false prophets have been walking on that ground. Many false teachers have been walking on that ground. And religious people have been influencing that mind. And the people who are ignorant to salvation have been walking on that ground. And it is now hardened. Now when you come back, when you come to church, it says... Look at how hard in your heart is. It's like we're pouring water on the back of the dog. But now break up the fallow ground so that you'll be able to cultivate. There'll be conversion. Break up your fallow ground and so not among thorns. Look at verse 4. In verse 4, circumcise yourselves to the Lord. Circumcise yourself. You're coming to the Lord because of that all that hardened nature and all the extra flesh that you brought into the world that made you to be doing the works of the flesh it says circumcise yourselves to the lord and take away the false kings of your of the heart and ye men of judah and inhabitants of jerusalem lest my fury come forth like fire and burn that none can quench it because of the evil of your doings. And then we're told in Acts chapter 3, reading from verse 19, Acts chapter 3 verse 19, repent ye therefore and be converted. What the Old Testament in Jeremiah says, break up your fallow ground and then do not sow amongst us and circumcise yourself unto the Lord in plain normal understandable language of the new testament it's repent ye therefore and be converted that your sins may be blotted out you have to repent before before your sins can be blotted out you cannot say the pastor said everybody you are forgiven my sins are blotted out 
doesn't happen that way. Even when Jesus said, forgive them, they know not what they do. Each of those people must still come and repent. That's what Peter is telling them by the Spirit of God that the universal prayer only opens the door for everyone who wants to repent to come and have the salvation of the Lord. Repent ye therefore individually, personally. You committed the sin personally by yourself. You repent personally by yourself. Repent ye therefore and be converted that your sins may be blotted out when the times of refreshing shall come from the presence of the Lord. Verse 26, in verse 26, it says, Unto you first, God, having raised up his son, Jesus, sent him to bless you. When you repent, when you are converted, he sent him to bless you in turning away every one of you from his iniquity. We're looking at number two here. Number two is the cultivation and faithful sowing by the saint. You have not become a child of God. You're born again, you're converted. Your sins are blotted out. A new life has now come into you. And the places I used to go, I go there no more. The things that you to say, I say them no more. And the things I used to drink, I drink them no more. The gang I used to participate in, the rituals, I do that no more. Something happened. Christ came into my heart. After that conversion, there's the cultivation and the sowing by the Spirit. Hosea chapter 10, reading from verse 12. Hosea chapter 10, verse 12. Sow to yourselves a righteousness. Are you born again? Now sow to yourselves a righteousness. Reap in mercy. Break up your fallow ground, for it is time to seek the Lord. You have been born again. Praying does not stop. You have been converted. Seeking the face of the Lord has not stopped. Salvation is not the end of our experience of the Lord. We must move on and go on because it says now it is time to seek the Lord till he come and reign righteousness upon you. Amen. We're looking at James chapter 3 verse 17. In James chapter 3 verse 17, but the wisdom that is from above. When you seek the Lord after you are saved, and when you say, I want to progress, I want to move on, I'm seeking the virtues, I'm seeking the character of kingdom citizens, and you're seeking the Lord, he gives you wisdom, wisdom from above. is first pure and then peaceable and gentle and easy to be entreated, full of mercy and good fruit without partiality and without hypocrisy. Verse 18, verse 18, and the fruit of righteousness is sown in peace. Now in your life, anywhere you go, you're sowing the seed of righteousness and you're having the fruit of righteousness and you're having peace, peace in your heart, peace with God and peace with your fellow man and peace in your family. Everything you do is directed. Everything you do is controlled. Everything you do is targeted to having peace with everyone around and the fruit of righteousness is sown in peace of them that make peace. We're looking at uh, number three. Number three here is the commendation of fruitful sowers to the Spirit. The commendation of fruitful sowers to the Spirit. Philippians chapter 1, reading from verse 9. In Philippians chapter 1, verse 9, 
and this I pray that your that your love may abound yet more and more in knowledge and in all judgment. And then in verse eleven, in verse eleven it says, "Being filled with the fruits of." righteousness now that you are born again everything you do your action your lifestyle your interaction your influence everything is now to bear the fruit of righteousness in your life and in the lives of the people who are relating with you people will not say since i met him my commitment to holiness has gone down since I met her, my devotion to holiness, righteousness has gone down. Its influence on my life, her influence on my life has made me a little bit careless than I was before. But when you are sowing the right seed and you are sowing the good seed and you have the fruit of righteousness and everybody you interact with they'll say since I knew him since I knew her I've been very conscious of holiness without which no man shall say the Lord he elevates she exalts that holiness above every other thing my interaction with him my relationship with her has made me more conscious of righteousness and holiness than I ever was before and I'm praising God for the time I've been with him, I've been with her. But he falls on the other hand that she is so into the flesh. He is so into the flesh. They will be saying, I pray God will deliver me from this interaction and relationship so that I can get to heaven. Because since I met her, since I met him, the fruit of righteousness and holiness has decreased in my life. It says, now, if we know the Lord and we have the Lord and we're walking according to the way of the Lord, we're filled with the fruits of righteousness, which are by Jesus Christ unto glory and uh, the praise of God. In John chapter 15, uh, reading from verse 2, John chapter 15 verse 2, every branch in me that beareth not fruit, the fruit of righteousness, he taketh away. And every branch that beareth fruit, he purges it, that it may bring forth more fruit. That's the reason for every message we hear, bring forth more fruit. That's the reason for every Bible study we have, bring forth more fruit. That's the reason for every family devotion, personal devotion we have every day, bring forth more fruit. That the reason for every conference we have, every message we're listening to, to bring forth more fruit. And when you allow God to use that in your life, every ministration, every message, and every assembly like this will add to the fruit of your life that each may bring forth more fruit. Look at verse 8. Verse 8 says, Herein is my Father glorified that she bear much fruit bear much fruit so shall ye be my disciples verse 16 in verse 16 it says ye have not chosen me but I have chosen you and ordained you that ye should go and bring forth fruit that there is sin he brings us near to be with him that the reason he brings us near so that his life his sacrifice and everything he has done will so influence our lives and we will have more fruit more fruit in holiness more fruit in righteousness more fruit in every area of our lives he has ordained us he has put us in place that he should go and bring forth fruit and that your fruit should remain and what that whatsoever ye shall ask of the father in my name he may give it you i pray we'll keep on bearing fruit in jesus name in uh, hebrews chapter 13 we're looking at verse 12 hebrews 
chapter 13 and we're reading here from verse 12 it says wherefore Jesus also that he might sanctify purify the people with his own blood suffered without the gauge uh, one of the major reasons why Christ suffered why Christ sacrificed why Christ laid everything down and why Christ was crucified on the cross one of the major reasons is our sanctification of course for our salvation for our conversion, for our righteousness, for putting us and writing our names in the book of life and for forgiving us the past and setting us free so that we can live a life that is free from sin. But then it's not only that salvation. Have you thought about why Christ suffered for you? You're a believer. It says, wherefore Jesus also, that he might sanctify you as one of his people who are already born again with his own blood that he might sanctify the people he suffered without the gauge in verse 13 in verse 13 it says let us go forth therefore unto him he sacrificed so we can be sanctified if we don't go to him if we don't consecrate to him if we don't lay everything on the altar if we don't pray fervently that he will sanctify us it will not be done he has done his part we need to do our part let us go forth therefore unto him without the camp bearing his reproach when you're seeking something from the lord the people who are not seeking that thing from the lord may reproach you may belittle you may speak against you they may they may jeer and jest about you they may make you the talk of the town and they may be playing with who you are that doesn't that doesn't shake you if you really want what christ has suffered sacrifice so that you can have that thing you don't mind what ridicule and what they say it says let us go forth therefore unto him without the camp bearing his reproach why look at verse 14 in verse 14 for here have we no continuing city but we we'll seek one to come if heaven is your goal and you're seeking that which is to come you'll not mind what people think of sanctification what they say of holiness you will go to him outside the camp bearing his reproach consecrating everything on the altar looking at your life you'll not be so much in a hurry after the bible study you're rushing out we without getting the message from the head to the heart you will pray and allow that spirit of God to so work in your heart that when you leave the church at the end of the Bible study you had got something that you didn't have at the time you came in look at verse 15 in verse 15 by him therefore let us offer the sacrifice of praise to God continually that is the fruit of our leaves giving thanks to his name in verse 16 but to do good and to communicate forget not for with such sacrifices God is well please we'll come to point number three now point number three the effectual response of saints sowing in due season in galatians chapter 6 we're reading from verse 9 it says let us not be weary in well doing are we born again now the result of being born again well Doing. Are we sanctified now? The reward and the result, the evidence of that sanctification, well doing. Are we in the fellowship and we're already built into the fellowship or the fellowship? The result of that, the evidence of that, well doing. It says, let us not be weary in well doing no evil doing well doing for in due season we shall reap 
if we faint not, and then in verse 10, in verse 10, as we are therefore opportunity, let us do good unto all men, especially unto them who are of the household of faith. Three things we're looking at here. Number one, the covenant of well-doing in the family. Number two, the commitment to well-doing in the fellowship. Number three, the commission in well-doing on the field. That means anywhere we are in the family, in the fellowship, in the field, we are committed to well-doing. We consecrate our skill, our strength, our ability, our opportunity, our privilege. We consecrate everything to well-doing. Every day and every moment, in the morning, in the afternoon, in the evening, anytime we have opportunity to relate with people, to interact with people, we're committed to well-doing. Look at number one there, the covenant of well-doing in the family. Well-doing doing in the family. In Proverbs chapter 31, reading from verse 10. Proverbs chapter 31, reading from verse 10, who can find a virtuous woman for a price is far above rubies. Then in verse 11, it says, the heart of her husband does simply trust in her so that he shall have no need of spoil. Now verse 12, it says, For she will do him good, well doing, and not evil all the days of her life. You see, when we are real children of God, and you are married together, the Christian man, the Christian woman, you are committed to well doing, well doing at the time, at the beginning of the marriage, and then when you begin to have children, and then till old age, if you are still Christians, you are committed to well doing. You never plan evil, you never think of evil against each other. All you can think of, what good thing can I do today? that I didn't do yesterday what well what well doing should I manifest today that I didn't manifest the other day if anything happens and then you broke that and you didn't do that you say Lord give me another chance I'm committed to the covenant of well doing between the husband and the wife and the wife and the husband. It tells us in Ephesians chapter 5, we're reading from verse 28. Ephesians 5, reading from verse 28, it tells us, So ought men to love their wives as their own bodies. He that loveth his wife loveth himself. Verse 29, in verse 29, For no man ever yet hated his own flesh, but nourisheth and cherisheth it, even as the Lord, the church. Verse 30, in verse 30 it says, For we are members of his body, and of his flesh, and of his bones. Verse 31, verse 31 says, For this cause shall a man leave his father, and mother and shall be joined and cleave unto his wife and they two not three one man and two women not three one woman and two men one man and one woman till death do them part it says shall be joined unto his wife and they two shall be one flesh verse 32 in verse 32 this is a great mystery but i speak concerning christ and the church in verse 33 it says nevertheless let every one of you in particular if you are saved let every one of you 
if you are born again, let every one of you, if you remember the universal law of sowing and reaping and doing well in the family, let every one of you in particular so love his wife, even as himself. And the wife see that she reverends her husband. Let's look at number two here. Number two here is the commitment to well doing in the fellowship in the fellowship of the children of god you're born again and born again we're born again and we come to the assembly we come to the church the fellowship of called out ones were called out of the world out of sin out of evil out of all those uh, degradations in society and were called out unto the lord to become the body and the bride of christ we must commit ourselves to well doing in the fellowship we're not just coming in and going out we're receiving so much at the you know messages and the fellowships of the prayer and the ministry of the ministers but we only receive and receive and receive and we do nothing but if we're real children of God in the fellowship of the people of God we are committed to well doing in the fellowship in Romans chapter 2 reading from verse 7 Romans chapter 2 verse 7 to them who by patient continuance in well doing patient continuous persevering continuous well doing seek for glory and honor immortality and eternal life in first peter chapter 2 reading from verse 15 first peter chapter 2 verse 15 for so is the will of god that with well doing ye may put to silence the ignorance of foolish men you don't say okay they are foolish they don't recognize they don't appreciate my well doing and all that i'm doing to contribute to the growth of the fellowship therefore i stop therefore i fold my hand therefore i turn a deaf ear to all the requests around me no it says so it's the will of god that with well doing ye may put to silence the ignorance of foolish men in chapter 3 of first peter first peter chapter 3 verse 17 for it is better if the will of god be so that ye suffer for well doing well doing even if you suffer even if you're misunderstood even if you're misinterpreted even if they misconstrue your purpose and the reason for doing what you're doing but you keep because that's your nature now a fish will keep on swimming whatever the outward world is saying a bird will keep on flying whatever the outward world is saying if it's now your nature the new nature, the nature of Christ in you, who went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil, for God was with him. If the mind of Christ, the nature of Christ, the spirit of Christ has now come into you and saturated you, the only thing you can do now is to do well. Whatever happens, whatever the comments of people, it says, for it is better. If the will of God be so that he suffer for well doing than for evil doing. And then he tells us in chapter 4, First Peter chapter 4, reading from verse 19, it says, Wherefore, let them that suffer according to the will of God, persecution may come, criticism may come, oppression may even come misunderstanding may come but then it says let them that suffer according to the will of god commit the keeping of their souls to him in well doing in your commitment well doing consecration well doing in your prayers 
well doing. And you're going to God and saying, Lord, they're putting pressure on me. They're persecuting me. And you don't change your commitment in well doing because of that. It says, you commit the keeping of your soul in well doing as a faithful creator. Second Peter chapter 3, we're reading from verse 10. Se sorry, Second Thessalonians. Second Thessalonians chapter 3, reading from verse 10. It's still talking about well doing. It says, for even when we were with you, this we commanded you that if any man would not work, neither should he eat. Then in verse 11, in verse 11, for we hear that there are some which walk among you disorderly, walking not at all, but are busy bodies. In verse 12, verse 12 then tells us, now them that are such, we command and exhort by our Lord Jesus Christ that with quietness they work and eat their own bread now verse 13 verse 13 says but ye brethren be not weary in well doing be not tired of well doing God has provided for you to take care of people God has provided for you to show love and to show kindness and give a helping hand render a helping hand to people be not tired be not weary in well doing we're looking at number three number three tells us now the commission in well doing on the field, on the field. It wants us to go to the field and everywhere do good. Give them the good news. The good news of salvation. The glad tidings of salvation. The gospel of salvation. That's the highest good you can do unto people. And he tells us in Galatians chapter 6, reading from verse 9. And let us not be weary. Let us, preachers, pastors, ministers, members, let us not be weary. Apostles, ambassadors of Christ, let us not be weary. The people who are sons and servants and saints of God, everyone, let us not be weary. Those who are called into the kingdom and you still abide in the kingdom and the Lord has given you grace, grace in salvation, grace in sanctification and grace to bear whatever body comes your way. He says this is the evidence as we go to the field, as we go to the world, as we interact with people everywhere and we're taking the good nature and the good, uh, the good gifts the Lord has given us and we're taking that everywhere. Let us not be weary in well doing for in due season we shall reap if we faint not. You are not faint. I will not faint. What makes people to faint when they start something, they're excited and they're happy and it's like, I want to touch everyone in the world. I want to reach the world. And then they meet some stumbling blocks and some stumbling stones. And then they meet some pebbles and they knock their legs or their toes on something very, very painful. Or people react in a way they were not expecting. They should be praising me and they should be rejoicing for me. But now they are looking down. I mean, when they meet uh, problems like that, it makes them to now become weary and they are back and they say, well, I don't think I want to do that again. Whether they praise you or they don't praise you, whether they appreciate you or they don't appreciate you, and whether you suffer, whatever happens, if you know, here is the good thing that the Lord has committed into your hand and you're doing that, let us not be weary on the field. In where doing for in due season we shall reap if we faint not then in verse 10 it says 
us we have therefore opportunity opportunity abounds every day to people near to people who are far away opportunity abounds every time to people you can talk to directly to people you can use the media the telephone whatever to reach them opportunity abounds everywhere and the word is there for you to you know cut it out and send to them you must remember everyone and you are remembering them for the gospel you are remembering them for the grace of God you are remembering them for goodness you are remembering them for the godliness that will help them and take them to heaven it says as we have therefore opportunity let us do good unto all men amen I will do good I will do good open your mouth and talk to all men to all women to the young people and to the adults anyone that comes your way that the lord will give you that purpose of heart every day this is why you're still alive that you will do good unto all men especially unto them who are of the household of faith and the good you do in their lives will make them move forward in the path that leads unto life eternal in jesus name and amen. amen let's rise up now and talk to the lord in prayer everything we've heard today that the lord himself will grant you the grace will grant you the ability will grant you the remembrance the understanding of everything we've learned so that we will do good in every life so to the spirit not to the flesh